Yeah, coming up on the show, a mother who lost her son on campus, hosted a candlelight vision. We've got that inside scoop. The passing of two new bills in Mississippi that challenge transgenders' rights have some Mississippians outraged. Yep, that's right. This hard-hitting episode of SMTV for April the 3rd starts right now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM, thank you for joining us. I am Amaya Norman and here we are with our top news story. A visual was held last week in honor of the USM student that fell from the campus parking garage. But the mouse was there on the scene. Yeah, thank you, Amaya. So, this next story I have for you is a follow-up piece, but also a heart-wrenching one as well. If you aren't reminded of the events that happened about six months ago at our parking garage, you should be by the barriers on the fourth floor. For the first time, the mother and the person who was with him while the events occurred spoke to us. To live in hearts we leave behind is to not die, Thomas Campbell. I was never able to summon courage and actually see where he landed. So today was my first time to come and see where he fell. Courageous and brave are some words some might use to describe the act by Alex Motanya's mother, who hosted a candlelight vigil for him on Thursday, March 28th, exactly six months after his tragic passing. I called the police officers to to come and show me and so this is apparently the exact spot so we drove here and put a portrait and a candle the police officers were kind enough to stay with us because it was a celebration of life and many of you may not have known him personally i asked her to tell the campus exactly who her son was alexander was a people's person i think he loved people he loved life and um, he was somebody who connects very easily with people from different walks of life. With elderly, with children, he loved children. He had great ambitions in life. He was an amazing speaker. He was a very big social media influencer with over two million likes. He was a philosopher. A mother's love endures through it all. Taylor Bunning was there on September 28th when it all happened and can depict the events in detail. I was standing like right there, right before he fell, when he fell. I can tell you exactly where he fell. I can tell you that he did the sign of the cross before he died. I then asked Taylor what was her mom's reaction. She came and picked me up a few hours later after I called her about what happened. I was hysterical. She drove all the way from Louisiana to come get me in the middle of the night, even though she had work the next day. We were informed about the vigil because of these two Yik Yak posts that gained traction that very night. What we didn't know was it was one of Campus PD's very own who was behind the post. Who also spoke about different options when dealing with the stress of college. Be more empathetic to your peers. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning, if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, call us. We're here all night. Um, we'll come sit with you. We'll talk to you. We'll get counseling services on scene for you if you need it. Everybody I've asked about him is like, oh yeah, Alex. Everybody loved him. And it's a lot of stress being in college sometimes. It's a very new experience for people. Like your world's being completely flipped on its head. I think small reminders that it's going to be okay from like the, your peers, that would help a little bit because it's scary being an adult. And I didn't actually know how many people like that out there and I started talking to people I realized somebody would say oh I lost my brother or I lost my father to suicide um, I lost my sister and it's much more prevalent than sometimes we realize that it is as our USM community continues to mourn the events that happened six months ago to that day it should be known that strength isn't always enough when dealing with the weight of the world on your shoulders and to Alex, though you may have left us that day, you still live on through our hearts. I'm Beth L. Miles, SMTV. Two new bills categorized as women rights bills have recently been passed in Mississippi. Some citizens are distressed by what the bills put into place. Simeon Gates has more on the story. 
TSC is a nonprofit that provides community and resources to the LGBTQ Mississippians. At the time of reporting, they are fighting bills HB 1607 and SB 2753. Both bills define sex as biological and determined at birth and that the only sexes are male and female. Among other things, they also define terms like boy and girl as based on biological sex. The bill's supporters say they want to protect women's rights and dignity. TSC President Mickey Stratos and others say that they restrict the rights of transgender and gender nonconforming people to be recognized as their chosen identities. It really has nothing to do with women, the needs of women in this state or in general doesn't target women's health care or expanded access to Medicaid or um, the rights of women to just do various things in their daily lives. A member of TSC's team, Zach Bond, spoke about what those outside of the transgender community should understand. I just wish that they would understand that just the way that they know their gender, we do as well, and it's very simple. And we just want to live our lives just like they are, and we're not trying to encroach on anybody or be danger to anybody. Simeon Gates, SM2 News. The U.S. Supreme Court heard arguments in a recent case with far-reaching implications for abortion rights and FDA regulations. Justices appeared hesitant to restrict access to the abortion pill mifeprestone, despite challenges from anti-abortion doctors. The crux of the case revolves around the FDA's decision to ease restrictions on mifeprestone, allowing mail-in prescriptions. The plaintiff argued that the FDA overlooked safety concerns while the government contended that doctors are not obligated to prescribe and or treat patients with the pill. Justices probed the legal basis for challenging the FDA's judgment and questioned the necessity of a nationwide ruling. Students here on campus have their own thoughts on the case as well. You just have the choice to not operate or not participate if they feel like something is immorally wrong to them. So I feel like, why do we have to take away women's choice? And if they do go through with, you know, limiting access to this pill, this could have many negative implications for other type of drugs and vaccines. One of the other concerns with restricting the drug is opening the floor to any medicine being restricted or possibly banned as well as challenging the FDA's long-standing system. On a serious note, the USM Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students and the Sexual Assault Prevention Ambassador have partnered with each other, other to teach students about abuse, including the various types. Reporter Raven Payne was there on the scene. USM MAPS and USM SAPO discussed about a serious topic that everyone should be aware about, abuse. It was a violence prevention panel event on March 28th from 5.30 p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. The event was held in the Thad Cochran Center, room 216. Gabby McCroskey, president of SAPO, stated MAPS reached out to SAPO to have this event. So MAPS reached out to SAPO and um, to do a violence prevention panel uh, to educate the MAPS and um, the USM community about what violence, preven uh, violence, domestic violence, sexual violence and stuff like that actually looks like and how we as a community can step in and help prevent it for not only ourselves but within our community and observation wise. The panelists range from discussing what is abuse and the different types of abuse to introducing themselves and being open for discussion and questions. A Zoom was provided as an option if no one can attend the in-person event. Kamaya Given, MAPS Outreach Committee Chair, says her reasoning for joining the organization was because of her major. I got into MAPS because I am a pre-health student. I want to be a physician assistant and they are a good resource for um, outreach opportunities like volunteer opportunities and also it's a good connection for pre-health students to see how to, what track to go on or even have friends within the group. So I just kind of contacted one of the MAPS members, was like, hey, how can I join? And they sent me a link. To look to be a part of MAPS in SAPA and to follow more events, follow their Instagram pages at usm.sapa and at usm underscore maps. Thank you so much, Raven. We have a fun segment where we went out and quizzed fellows USM students. So don't go anywhere. We still have our flash news briefing and more.
States. America. United States of America. United States. United States of America. America. United States. United States. US. Canada. 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 Oh, Korea. Uh, Great Britain. England. In England. UK. The UK. England. UK. Mexico. Spain or something. Italy. I'm going to Italy. Uh, Mexico. 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 It, it's Spain. Spain. I don't know. Brazil. 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 Japan. Venus. Brazil. Pass. Turkey. Mm -mm, that's not China. <laughs> that's a hard one. I'm going to go with Oman. Jupiter. <laughs> I don't know. Finland. Mm, I don't know that one. I don't India. know. India. No, I don't know that one either. Afghanistan. Pass. Kenya. Nigeria. Is that Africa? Ireland. China. So I'm locked in. Lock it in. Scotland. Skip it, man. I think that's Uganda. That's Uganda. Eurasia. No, I don't know that one either. France. UK. France. Palestine. No. Uh, France. That's uh, France, bro. Uh, whatever, we'll call it Germany. Yeah, we'll call it Germany. <laughs> Wait, whatever. Whatever. Okay, pass. Germany. Turkey. Venus. Jamaica. Black, red, and yellow. Africa. Save the date, Saturday, May 18th, Armed Forces Day, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Town Square Park, downtown Hattiesburg. Join us for VetFest 2024, where we will showcase veteran-owned businesses and veteran service providers. We will have bounces for the kids, musical entertainment, and special giveaways. The Jackson VA Mobile Health Clinic will be on site for veteran wellness checks. This is a family event for all ages. Bring your chairs and help us support our veterans. VetFest 2024 will be hosted by your local DAV Chapter 62. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular. Welcome back. Here's your flash news briefing. For local news, the University of Southern Mississippi just announced a new restaurant the school is planning to add to their Hattiesburg campus. The Eagle Dining organization at USM made a post on their official Instagram, Eagle Dining USM, informing students that an addition will be made to the Hattiesburg campus in the fall. The post was followed by a graphic with the words, coming soon fall 2024 on it. A few days later, the Instagram account made a post that revealed the newest addition to Eagle Dining, a Panda Express. The newest post again confirms that the restaurant is planned to be open for the upcoming fall semester. Many students are excited for the new dining experience. Yeah, absolutely, I know I am. Now in your Mississippi State news, on Monday, April 8th, a partial solar eclipse will grace the skies above Mississippi. It's exciting, I know. And while the best view spots lie to the north and west regions of the nation, the state will still offer a captivating show. Remember, safety first. You never want to look directly at an eclipse without proper eye protection. And for those eager to catch the event, the Mississippi Museum of Natural Science is offering advanced tickets online until Friday, April 5th at 3 p.m. Eclipse glasses are included, but mark your calendars because the eclipse, 
kicks off at 12.33 p.m. It peaks at 1.52 p.m. and concludes by at or around 3.11 p.m. Don't miss this extraordinary cosmic event. For national news, newly released footage reveals the fatal, the fatal shooting of 15-year-old Savannah Gradino who was killed during a gun battle on a Southern California highway. Savannah, who has been kidnapped by her father, appeared to be surrendering when San Bernardo County Sheriff deputies opened fire. The incident occurred after a pursuit spanning 70 miles along Highway 15. The deputies lacking body cameras were captured by a sheriff helicopter and witness dashboard cameras. The circumstances surrounding Savannah's death remain under security. Yeah, absolutely. This episode has been a doozy. It mm -hmm. seems like every time we get down to the end of the year in school, it's just more and more things happening outside in the world. Yeah, and it can really be very much over overwhelming. Um, I'm not sure what the weather is really looking like in California, but let's see what the weather is looking like in Mississippi. Take it over to Rachel Brox. Hey Golden Eagles, I am Rachel Brox and welcome to your SMTV weather. After a mainly cloudy week, the sun has finally decided to make its appearance on Thursday and will bring us a high of 70 degrees. The low for Thursday, however, will be at 41. Speaking of low, the rain chances for Thursday are almost non-existent with only a 2% chance, which is proof that we can enjoy a sunny day on Thursday. It's now time to see if the rest of our week's forecast will be just as nice. Friday seems to be a lovely day as well with a cloudless sky and a high of 72. The low for Friday is also in the 40s, just at 43 degrees. Saturday will also be a really warm day with a high of 73 and a low of 46. However, that same day will give us our first clouds of the week. You should expect a mostly cloudy sky for Saturday. Sunday will continue to be partly cloudy, but those clouds won't stop the temperature from rising because Sunday's high will be posted at 79 degrees along with a low of 50 degrees. Monday will be the same as Sunday with partly cloudy skies and a high of 79 degrees. The only difference is that the low will rise to 61. Let's check to see if any of those clouds throughout the week will give us some rain. Friday and Saturday's rain chances are both sitting pretty low at a rain chance of 4%. Sunday's clouds will continue to roll in and still stays in the single digits at 5%. Monday has the only real chance of us seeing rain with a 24% chance, but I wouldn't bet on it. And that concludes our SMTV weather report. Remember, whether rain or shine, be weather wise. I appreciate you for joining me, Rachel Brox, for your SMTV weather. Peace out, Southern Miss. Yeah, thank you so much, Rachel. Now, if you ever had a time to go to the bathroom, right now would be it. But be back because we still have SM2 Sports and Community Calendar left mm -hmm. in the show. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. SMTV will be right back. Hi, guys. That's Mad Dog here. Come on down to Scott Hall, April 4th, to come see some jokes, hear some amazing talent, so I'll dig y'all later. Hey, you guys. It's Jose Del Troy. I'm a musician. I can't wait to see you guys there. Hey guys, my name's Amaria Pitton, and my talent is singing. I cannot wait to see you guys at the SM2 Talent Show. Hi, my name is Callie. I am unsure about my talent, but maybe here to find out. My name is Naraya Bell. My talent is alliteration, and everybody got some talent. Hey guys, it's your girl Ashley, and I'm gonna be dancing at the Got Talent, so you should be there, or be swear, or be nowhere. My name is Rashad Williams. I go to USM, I'm a junior. I'll be playing the piano at the 2024 talent show, so be there here about it and get near. How do you do? My name is Jackie Davies, and I'll be performing some jazz standards on my eight-string ukulele at the uh, SM2 Got Talent Talent Show. Come on out, it'll be a great time. Hey, y'all. We, we are Airstar Eagles, Eagles, and our talent is dance. Come check us out at SM2 Got
Welcome back to your SM2 Sports Recap. I am Maya Evans and we have a full and exciting recap for you this week. Southern Miss Track has their home opener and senior day this past Saturday. The Golden Eagles did an outstanding job with 18 first places. Many people came out and support the Golden Eagles on the, on the sunny day. They had many teams including Mississippi Valley State, Dillard, Xavier, and Bell Haven. The men's 4x1 team went in a tight race as DeAndre Ward pulled away from Meridian Community College in the final stretch for the W. Then Silesia Fraser had a historical day Friday in the triple jump. She bounded into fifth in the nation with a jump of 13.1 meters. DeAndre Ward stayed consistent finishing in the top three this week as he lands in the first place in the long jump with a, with a time of 37.33 meters. Women's 4x1 wins in a landslide with a time of 44.35 seconds. The team featured Trinity Flaglier, Jada McDougall, Xavier Varnell, and Trinity Benson. Lastly, Ariana White places first in the javelin throw with a time of 42.73 meters. The Golden Eagles will be traveling to Tuscaloosa, Alabama for the Christmas Tide Invitational. So be on the lookout. The peak was packed as baseball reopened some belt play against Troy. They won 2-1 in the series, making them 18-10 overall and 63 in the conference. Hundreds of fans came out to support this Golden Eagles as they squared off against the Trojans. Golden Eagles also swung a season high 20 hits. Uh, really good. We uh, came out swinging yesterday, had 20 hits, which is a season high for us, and we run rolled them, so we're pretty good. In the first game, Southern Miss beat 12 14 4, led by Dalton McIntyre's 5 5 performance at the plate, leading the charge in the final game for the Golden Eagles. Will Armistead boosted 10 strikeouts to the counterpup, USM passed the Trogas in a 5 3 win. Baseball will be back in action Friday, April 5th, as they are headed to our neighbor state to take on South Alabama Jaguars. At the moment you all been waiting for, this week's Player of the Week goes to, go to Zalisha Frazier. Frazier had an outstanding day on day one at the Southern Miss Invitational, leaping into fifth in the nation. Frazier jumped a 13.1 meters in a triple jump. This has been your sports recap. Make sure you tune into next week's show. Thank you, Maya. Now it's time to see what on our community calendar for this week. Take it away, Kennedy Drake. Hello, Golden Eagles. My name is Kennedy Drake, and I'm here with the Community Calendar, where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. Get ready for the Ambassador Series, where they will present Long Beach Live Swinging at sunset with the Southern Miss Jazz Tet. The concert begins April 5th at 7 p.m. in Town Green Pavilion. The musical group is filled with six individuals who showcase their skills by playing a variety of instruments. This group is sure to take you on a musical journey. The University Forum will take place with the famous guest speaker, John Green. Mark your calendars for April 9th at 6.30 p.m. in Bennett Auditorium. John Green is an author and creates educational videos online. Don't miss the chance to learn how to reach success and become more informed about educational topics. Forest County Farmers Market Spring Festival will take place April 13th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 1200th Korean Street. This is the perfect opportunity to get fresh foods, baked goods, and plenty of accessories. Mark your calendars for an evening of shopping. If you are in the mood to have a good laugh, come see comedian James Gregory at the Joe Paul Theater in the Thad Cochran Center. The fun starts April 14th at 5 p.m. Gregory's comedy is based on real life experiences that will leave the audience in uplifting spirits. Bring a friend and enjoy comedic storytelling. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. This is just one way we thank our community for watching Southern Miss TV and supporting us here at Southern Miss Student Media Center. Visit our website, sm2media.com, to keep up with all of our news. 
Signing out, I'm Kennedy Drake, and this has been your Community Calendar. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors in communities around the world. When disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join United, United Way. Way. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. In honor of April Fool's Day, we're looking at our favorite comedian movie. I don't know about you, Bethel, but mine is The Hunt House. Let me tell you more about that. So if you have not watched The Hunt House, it is where Marlon Wade plays in it. His wife, Keisha, in a character, was possessed, and he's trying to get the demon out of his wife. He's using fake priests, he's using uh, Ghostbusters, he's doing everything, but it's not working. But that demon said, I'm staying. Not if I don't, if I remember correctly, him and his brother had a show a long time ago too. Correctly, mm -hmm. the Wayne Brothers Bros, wherever they are. The Wayne Brothers <laughs> Bros, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. I, I remember it. Definitely enjoying that show to the full effect. Now, mm. my favorite comedy movie isn't one that comes from them, but I really like Lottery Ticket, okay? Mm. It's a cliche, because it ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily a comedy. It's kind of got, not. Some, got some, a, a little bit of drama in there, a little bit of everything. Drama, most definitely. I'm not a big fan of Lottery Ticket, but it's drama, most definitely. Man. So, yeah. <laughs> Mario, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media page, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Mr. The media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out. We need you like you need us to Josh Wilson at josh.wilson at usm.edu. You can find all these stories and more on our website, sm2media.com. That's it for SMTV. Thank you all so much for joining us. And always remember, Southern Miss to the top. In America, millions of families are facing hunger. Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, we can end hunger.